considering this is one of the top rivalries in the CFL with the battle between the Prairies, this is actually a very rare thing that both the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Saskatchewan Rough Riders actually meet in the playoffs. I think the one anomaly is the fact that uh, for many years there, when either Montreal or Ottawa was out of the league, Winnipeg was a Eastern Division team to balance out the divisions, but uh, both teams uh, historically have had some lean years in between their championships here. But uh, let's relish another chapter in the Prairie Battle here with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the Western Semifinal here. So let's uh, bring my notes here. I I already did a video for the Eastern Semifinal, so you can uh, take a look at that video for my preview of that. But now we look at the west side of the bracket as we get on to the road to the 106th Grey Cup in Edmonton here. And uh, let's look at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Saskatchewan Rough Riders, shall we? So this game will happen on Sunday, November the 11th, 2.30 Mountain Kickoff at Mosaic Stadium, the new Mosaic Stadium. The first playoff game at the new Mosaic Stadium, may I add. So how the records we got here is that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were second in the West with a 12-6 and record. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were third in the West with a 10-8 and record. Winner of this game will head off to Calgary in the Western Final. That game will happen on Sunday, November 18th, a week later. So let's also break down some other records here. Shall we? The Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Saskatchewan's always a tough place to play, especially with their rabid fan base. But they were 6-3 and three at home, while the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were 4-5 and five on the road here. And then when it comes within the division here, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, despite how tough the West is, they actually were 7-3 and three against the West, while the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were 4-6 and six versus the West here. And as I say, the winner of this game is off to Calgary here. And I say when comparing this to the uh, the Eastern semifinal, I say this one's definitely a lot more of a heavyweight matchup here. And, uh, I mean, the West is definitely was a lot stronger of a, a division this year compared to the East. So uh, let's look at the season series here, shall we? I mean, traditionally, they're always given the play on Labor Day Sunday, and then they do the rematch of the Banjo Bowl here. This def was definitely not. This definitely was not different any this year. So week 12, if you go back to week 12 here, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 31 to 23 on Labor Day Sunday in in Saskatchewan here. Going to highlight this game is that Matt Nichols, the quarterback for the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, had a rough game with two interceptions. Andrew Harris still had a monster game on the ground with uh, 158 yards rushing. But Zach Claros, El Pass, Matt Nichols here with 250 yards passing and uh, won the turnover battle. This is definitely going to be a theme here in this matchup. So the following week, the Banjo Bowl, which happens in Winnipeg. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers lost another one here to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won this game 32-27 to to take the season series. And I highlight with this game is both Matt Nichols and Chris Traveler had a rough game with five interceptions thrown. And uh, this definitely was the low point to the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers season here. As uh, some pundits think that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers had enough talent to uh, take on Saskatchewan or Calgary or Edmonton before they had their... Uh, collapse in the second half here, but uh, this was tough times for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at this time, where, you know, Matt Nichols was questioned about does he have what it takes to be a starting quarterback, and was Michael Shea's job in jeopardy, and all the play calls, or should Chris Strother be the starting quarterback? But they actually played three times this season, both Winnipeg and Saskatchewan. If you go back to week 18 here, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers dominated the Saskatchewan Rough Riders with a 31 to nothing shutout. That definitely was a huge game. Winnipeg definitely made a statement, won the turnover battle. Zach Laros threw for two interceptions. 
Well, Zach Claros and uh, Brandon Bridge, the quarterbacks for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, couldn't even put up 100 yards passing that game. Yeah, it was that was that dominant of a defense for uh, Winnipeg. So well, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers definitely, uh, after they had their low point with the back-to-back -back against Saskatchewan, definitely uh, turned it on and became one of the hottest teams in the league. And I think the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had a taste of that in Week 18 here. So let's look at some playoff history here, and as I said in the opening, it's pretty rare that these guys meet in the playoffs. I mean, the last time these guys met in the playoffs was back in 2007, the 95th Grey Cup in Toronto. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers were Eastern champions here because uh, the Ottawa Renegades folded and, Ottawa, and Winnipeg moved over to the East to represent the East here. But the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won the Grey Cup by being the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 23 to 19. And then in 2003 in the Western semifinal, this game happened at the old Canadian Stadium, which is now demolished in Winnipeg here. Actually, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won this one 37 21 on the road here. And then if you want to go all the way back to 1975 in the Western semifinal, which happened at Taylor Field the old stadium in Saskatchewan. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 42-24 to here, so definitely in recent history here, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders has Winnipeg's number here in the playoffs if you go back to, you know, over 40 years here, which is quite a, quite incredible here. So now let's start breaking down the matchup here, like I did in the Eastern semifinal. I look at, you know, many, many uh, news articles and come up with my own conclusions when I break down each facet of the game here. So let's start with the most important position here at the quarterback. we got basically it's Matt Nichols and Zach Claros here. Zach Claros is, I mean, he got hit hard by Odell Willis in the last game of the season for the sketch from Rough Riders and had a concussion, but all indications are he's practicing and will get to play, but don't know what his health is going to be. Well, Matt Nichols is... Uh, He's been the hot, one of the hottest quarterbacks in the league here in the last couple months. So basically, got Matt Caleros, Matt, Matt Nichols, and Zach Caleros facing off against each other. So with this matchup, I give the edge to Matt Nichols here. Running back, you got Andrew Harris, who led the league in uh, rushing this season. While Saskatchewan has solid guys like uh, Trey Mason and Cameron Marshall, this is definitely a no-brainer here that uh, Winnipeg's got the edge there in running back. Even when they lost in that one game there, Andrew Harris still had 158 yards rushing. So when it comes to receivers here, I mean, I think that both teams are pretty balanced here, but they don't have that one big name that you see in leaders, but it's definitely a, a receivers by committee here. I'd say Saskatchewan's highlight guy is a rookie Jordan Williams-Lambert, while the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, I'd say their top receiver is Darvin Adams, but... Uh, they also have guys like Nick Dembski and uh, Weston Dressler, who also spent some time with the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders here. So when it comes to the receivers here, I give the edge to the uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. So now let's lift shit to the offensive line here, where quarterbacks get protected here. Saskatchewan has uh, you know veteran uh, Brandon Labatt here, another guy who's played on both sides of this prairie rivalry, and. Uh, they added Phil Blake to patch things up because the uh, offensive line has had some injuries for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, Winnipeg, they have big names like uh, Stanley Byron and Jamarcus Her Herdrick. So uh, they're up to the task. So I say when it comes to the offensive line, I give the edge to the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. So, so far on the offensive side of the ball, it looks like it's all Winnipeg here. But I think the tables are going to turn here when I talk about the defensive side of the ball here. So on the defensive side of the ball here, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders definitely have uh, on the D-line, Willie Jefferson and Charleston Hughes definitely highlight the sack, or they call it sack Saskatchewan in Saskatchewan here. Actually, one fact that I saw is that both Willie Jefferson and Charleston Hughes alone had more sacks than the Toronto Argonauts put together this year. Winnipeg counters act with uh, Craig Rowe, who is their sack leader. But when it comes to uh, the defensive line, I give the edge to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders here. 
So when it comes to the linebackers here, the uh, middle five here, there's really no one that really stands out here, but uh, they're always definitely tricky, and someone always steps up with a big game, especially with defensive mind and Chris Jones at the helm here. Well, uh, Winnipeg, I mean, they do have Adam Big Hill, but uh, they might have a big blow here is that Javon Santos Knox found out earlier this week had a boot cast on, so he might not be available here. But I think the collective effort by the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders gives them the edge over the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here, despite Adam Big Hill headlining the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. So when it comes to the defensive backs here, this is definitely uh, a no contest year. I mean, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have guys like Ed Ganey, Nick Marshall, Matt Elam, and Luchas Purfoy here, who they're definitely ball locks and always hungry for interceptions. And uh, but the one guy that stands up for Winnipeg here is Kevin Fogg. But uh, when it comes to the defensive backs here, the Saskatchewan definitely has the edge there. So when it comes to the return game, Saskatchewan has Marcus Stigpin, while uh, Kevin Fogg has it for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. Both guys have their big moments here, but I'm going to say coming into this matchup, it's a push. I, get, I don't give anyone the edge there. So uh, I'm going to say whoever shows up that game will, uh, more will obviously win, but coming in as a preview, no one's got the edge here. So now when we look at the kicking game here, I mean, Saskatchewan's got Brett Lowther, who's pretty solid at uh, making field goals, and Josh Bartell is a pretty good punter in terms of, you know, putting teams in the field position there. While J Justin Medlock is the uh, the guy for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, I give no one the edge here too. That both teams have a solid kicking game here, and I don't see anyone being better right now at this matchup. So now this is where I make my statements for e case for each team. So. Uh, I think the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will win if Zach Claros outpasses Matt Nichols in this matchup. Win the turnover battle. Definitely who all the, the three games that happened, who won the turnover battle, turnover battle, won the game. It depends how big of a game Willie Jefferson and Charleston Hughes has. Not necessarily sacking Matt Nichols, but can he get in his kitchen, you know, make him rush, put him under pressure. And then the last one being that this game is in Saskatchewan. He's right or real to their advantage, you know, especially on defense for, you know, when Winnipeg has the ball here. So I think those are the factors that are in play here for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to win. So now I let's look at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers will win if, I'm going to say, if they come off to a quick start, get a quick score here or get a, you know, maybe – Get a quick turnover and score on that. Quiet Ryderville. You know, shut them up or turn the, turn Ryderville against them. So I think that's definitely a key for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Just like what I said with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Win the turnover battle. This is definitely going to be playing a full role here. And uh, how big of a game Andrew Harris has. I think if Andrew Harris this time outruns the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, they're going to win. And then last one is if Matt Nichols stays hot and spreads the ball around like he has up to the last couple months here. So uh, that's where I think it would take for the Winnipeg Blue Bars to win. So as all the games here in the Great Cup playoffs here, they're all played outside, so look at the weather forecast as of uh, making this notes here. It's a mix of sun and cloud, but it's going to be a high of minus 9, so it's definitely going to be... A very cool one here in Regina, and then with this game starting uh, later in the afternoon here, the low is minus 17 in the cloudy periods here, so while precipitation won't be a factor, it's definitely going to play a role, in, especially on the ground here, with a harder ball and maybe player sweat, you know, freezing, the ball could be slippery here, so uh, precipitation might not be a factor, but the cold will be. So who do I think is going to win the Western semifinal and head off to Calgary here? I actually think the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, I'll give them a 50% confidence here, I think will win and be half to Calgary here. I feel like that uh, you know Winnipeg has stayed hot in the second half and 
looked like a threat here. I mean, I threw all the records there in the, the season series. Uh, I footnoted that Winnipeg was on their low there, but Winnipeg is looking like one of the top. They're the top team in the league and the team to beat, and, you know, Matt Nichols is on the top of his game, and also what I said, we don't know what the health of Zach Claros is, but, uh, you know, Matt Nichols and even Chris Strudler can be a nice option for trick plays or maybe come in for a few series for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So that's my preview of the Western Semifinal. I also have my video for the Eastern Semifinal here, so uh, next week at this time, I'll uh, once the semifinal games get played and make my notes, I'll do my previews for both the East and West Finals when we get one step closer to the Grey Cup. But if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just make sure you hit like, subscribe, and uh, you know I'll see you next week for the previews of the East and West Finals. I always say I'll see you at the next video.